It's a rather interesting topic we're looking at here, higher order derivative templates. I am Mr. Ish, thank you for joining me. What are these higher order derivative templates? Well, here's an example for a sine function, but the similar template here is equivalent for a cosine function. These templates are available to you to help you determine higher order derivatives of those type of functions which can keep having a derivative come about which do not exhaust themselves or go down to a zero in terms of a derivative. We have here a function y is equal to sine ax. If you wanted to find a higher order derivative of it, this is the template you would use. And I have already alluded it's the exact same template for a cosine function as it is for a sine. If my this function, original function is y is equal to sine, let's say 4x, I want to determine the fifth order derivative right here. How would I do it? I can use this template and I will. The fifth order derivative would be equal to this a to the power of n. This right here is my ax. My a here is a 4 to the power of n, which is 5. Then you have sine. You would have here a 4x plus 5 pi over 2 because n value here is 5. The a value here is 4. 4 to the power of 5 is equal to 1024. And now you would open this up using the sum formula of sine, that trigonometric identity you know. And we will do it sine 4x cosine 5 pi over 2. This right here is your sum formula for sine plus sine 5 pi over 2 and cosine 4x. 5 pi over 2 is coterminal with pi over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 are equal to 1. But cosine of these angles is always equal to 0. That zeroes out. Sine of this angle is equal to 1. The only thing which remains is cosine 4x. If someone were to ask you what's the fifth order derivative of this function using the template, well it's this 1024 cosine 4x and that would be your answer. The fifth order derivative, we have used an easy template. Now look at this example, y is equal to cosine root 2x. I want to determine the tenth order derivative, but I can use the same template because sine and cosine, sine and cosine, they work very well here. The tenth order derivative here is going to be what? a to the power of n, here's my a, root 2 to the power of 10, and then you'll have cosine, and then obviously you're running everything through there, root 2x plus 10 pi over 2. What's 10 pi over 2? Well, it's 5 pi. So why don't we just write 5 pi? Root 2 to the power of 10, you can easily determine that it's not too hard. Run that through your calculator, run it through your head, you'll get 32. Open this up using the cosine formula. You know it's going to be cosine root 2x, and then cosine 5 pi minus, you're using the cosine sum formula, sine root 2x and then sine 5 pi. These angles which have a like a 0 or a pi or 360 reference angles, in terms of sine they're always 0, all of this zeroes out. What exactly is 5 pi? Well, it's like 900 degrees, it's coterminal with 180, cosine of 180 is always equal to minus 1, so this right here is equal to minus 1. This minus 1 can move itself at the very beginning. Your 10th order derivative for this function right over here would be minus 32 cosine root 2x and that would be your answer. And it wasn't too hard. So if someone were to ask you what are these higher order derivative templates, well these are exactly what they are. You can have them for hyperbolic functions, you can have them for trigonometric functions, exponential functions. For a variety of functions these derivative templates are available. You can use them for higher order derivative computations. I've shown you two examples here and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.